Metasploit Minute is brought to you by viewers like you. If you get value from this show and can spare even a dollar, please consider contributing at metasploitminute.com. Welcome to Metasploit Minute, the breakdown on breaking in. I'm your host, Rob Fuller, but you can call me Mubix. Today on Metasploit Minute, we're gonna be going into initial access. Now, Gerino CMD, I'm sorry, I don't um, have the correct pronunciation. Um, he wanted to know how to how does how does a pen tester, how does a red teamer get initial access? How does a bad guy get initial access? Well, you go to the receptionist and you say, "Hello, I would like access to your network. By the way, I have chocolate or a ducky or, or okay or that." <laughs> it's a very good question. Hey, I, I have a document I need to print. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Um, yes. What are some of your favorite ways? So. Um, like we said in the persistence, uh, we're going to keep coming back to this. Passwords are the, passwords, the, the bane passwords, of all of this, right? Passwords. Um, passwords are really a way that I get initial access. And, and you'd be surprised that I, that's, like, that's the majority of the ways. Throughout my entire career, that's, that's really how I got I access. I find that kind of surprising. Uh, but I understand why you would go for passwords first in that it is the weak link. Right. So, you know... Like, yes, you could try some elaborate exploit, remote code execution, all that stuff that might possibly set off alarms. Right. Or just, just log in with test, test, admin, admin, Tomcat, Tomcat. So the initial um, examples that I have here are um, Tomcat, JBoss, Glassfish, and Jenkins. Those are backend servers that kind of do a bunch of stuff. So anyone uh, familiar with any kind of Java coding? Yeah, I'm knows familiar with Tomcat Glassfish, from Sysadmin Java, stuff because yeah. it's just like, oh, you right. hate to have to run all that stuff, but right. they insist. That it has the, to be a specific version so right, that your stuff this, can go on this it. One accounting server will only run on the yeah. Yep. So um, and the great thing is like it's built in to literally load. Java classes, right, to load Java code. So if you get to authenticate to it, you can just throw a Java file at it and it goes, ta-da, here's some code execution for you. Um, and that's across the board on Tomcat, JBoss, Glassfish. Then Jenkins, Jenkins actually um, is a, a test server, so it'll run code, test to make sure it compiles correctly or does whatever it needs to correctly, and then spit out results. Well, it has this wonderful thing, slash script, where you can say, slash script, run this thing for me. So, that's um, sort of useful. <laughs> <laughs> it's really useful. So, um, the great thing is, like, there's a Metasploit module for it where you um, just say, hey, run, you know, give me a Metaperter session. And it goes, okay, here you go, here's a Metaperter session. There are ways to get around it um, by securing it. But those are my four or five ways for pa passwords um, for back end servers. Um, then, we go into web dev. And then web dev is like this forgotten technology that-, well, that Yeah, because 1998 called and it wants its web dev share <laughs> back. Right. <laughs> right, well, it's still there it, and it works. Even in like Windows 10, you can still connect to a web dev share. Um, and it's built in and it, it works, right? right. So a lot of people still SharePoint, use it. SharePoint, do I need to say right. any more? Right. Yeah. Um, uh, but XAMPP, one of my actually favorite projects, it's okay. great, um, but earlier versions, 1.73 and below, um, have default passwords for its web dev, all automatically enabled web dev location. So you upload PHP file, run PHP file, and wherever XAMPP's installed with an out-of-date version, you get code execution. Oh, that's fantastic. It is. And PHP Interpreter is awesome, and we've already yeah, gone into it that. it really is. And the hop payload. and Love the hops. Yeah. Okay. And then finally, Citrix. Um, so if you have a Citrix endpoint, and you have anyone, and it's connected to your domain, mm -hmm. as everyone does, puts you know LDAP connected so that you can just you know have users authenticate and stuff, and you have any bad users, guess what happens? I load Citrix up, and even if the only application that I have is Notepad, I open up Notepad, look, go to Open, Run, CMD. It's just like kiosk breaking, right? Mm. So if I, if there are any technologies you know to break out of a kiosk, right. those are the same techniques you're going to use for Citrix, right? And then you get code execution on the Citrix server. Oh, that's hot. Yeah. So those are those are my ways for password-based um, code execution. 
initial access. Sure. Now, the one that I think a lot of people like initially think of is, well, you know, you learn the environment, you find out as much as you can about the company and the way that they work, and then you craft a very like specialized fishing campaign for that organization. Spear fishing. Spear fishing, <laughs> as it were. Right, social uh, engineering, basically. And, and, you know, again, just like the passwords, people do it because it's so successful. And we've right. heard numerous stories about the statistics of how often it works. And, uh, you know, it goes after the other weak link, you know, if passwords are one of them. And as you were mentioning with defaults right. that are s uh, sadly not turned off, then the people are the other one. Right. Uh, you find phishing to be... Yeah, it's um, it's actually uh, not built into Metasploit framework itself, but um, if you get Pro, uh, Metasploit Pro or Metasploit Express, I think still has it, um, as well as um, I think Cobalt Strike has some phishing stuff. Right, that's that's like a paid version of Armitage, yep. kind of. The social engineering toolkit actually has you know phishing as its main um, you know source of awesomeness, um, but. I find that um, building my own phishing is actually mm -hmm. better um, because I can cater it to exactly what that organization needs or, or is expecting. So I'll build an HTML page and, and do stuff like that. Um, but there's some really fun technologies these days for um, doing phishing. It's, um, my bread and butter back in the day was Java applets. Now okay. that Java applets are kind of like the bane of browser's existence, sure. right? There's like four different parts, There's buttons. There's four layers of like, don't run this. No idiot, don't run this. And it used right. to just be click yes and you're owned. Right. So the new hotness, and don't tell anyone about this. <laughs> don't don't tell anyone except if you're watching Metasploit Minute. Right. But yes, there's is, that. Is the Windows click once stuff, click once applications. So in Windows, um, if you download Chrome, there's it, it, you're, you're going to a website, it goes, um, would you like to install Chrome? Download Chrome. And then the little box, as soon as you do it, pops bloop, up, yeah, right? Bloop, bloop, bloop. I've seen it. It's so really, it, there's no download a, no, that happens. It just goes and it installs. feels like ActiveX back in the day for some reason. Right. What is that? I don't so even that's, know. That's a click once application. Ah. It's a dot application. So whenever uh, Internet Explorer goes to the dot application, mm. it automatically loads it. Oh, that's so that's hot. very easy, and it's written in C sharp. So all you do is load up C sharp and write some code, and that code does awesome things and, and pub <laughs> publish the application, and you're done. And no weird signing or anything. Oh, it's no? Visual Studio does the signing for you. Oh, perfect. Thank you. <laughs> so you sign the application, and you're done. So um, you do have the ability to export um, shell code for C sharp in in um, in Metasploit, and we can go into that in another that episode. That sounds we'll, we'll, like, yeah. Because we'll, yeah. these are, we're already a couple of Metasploit minutes into this minute. Right. We're, and we're just talking about initial access, and we'll actually go into the click one stuff later. And then finally, um, getting away from phishing is obviously the remote code execution. And right. the remote code execution is great, but literally of maybe only used it three times in the entirety of my career. Wow. I mean, but that's the thing, though, is like that's the scary one where it's like, oh, OMG RCE, right? right? Yeah. You know, there, there's execution for Windows Server. It's like, wow, this is going to be a bad day for everyone. Yeah, um, but it's not that often that, you, that it actually works, like that is actually useful. Well, that, that seems to be... Because you know, it's what, detectable, right? Right. Everyone, as soon... Like, there so are so many why, vendors out that's there that That's an interesting it. point, because, you know, typically you're told, like, oh, well, what you do is you scan the network, you know, as, as passively as you can. Find an exploit. So find, an, find a... Oh, look, they're running an an old version of Apache, and then right. the next thing you know, God. you pop the box. Right. Um, Never going to happen. It's it's not a well. I mean, that's MSO8. Why, I mean, right. well, MSO Windows 6 and 7 is a special case, right? But um, if you go to any training, any training, mm -hmm. except for ours later in July, um, June, um, you'll 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 get MSO8 or 67 or some other exploit, some other thing that there's because it's magic. Prep because it. when it works, it feels like magic because you're just like, I want access to that box. Click, boom, I'm in. Speaking of access to that box, aren't you running HFS, that thing that we talked about back in you know, season one? See, this is the reason you you got me hooked on HFS. And if you haven't checked it out, it is an amazing it's little awesome. file system utility. Uh, Mubix is known for his pen drive of awesome. Yeah. Uh, so go <laughs> and check out the episode of Hack 5 from 10 <laughs> years ago. <laughs> in four Four colon three or four. four. And, and so I guess this would be an example of why you shouldn't run 10-year-old software. <laughs> Mind you, it's in a very limited scope. Like, this is what I use to, in a jiffy, copy a file rather than right. sneak or net it. Well, it's not 10-year-old software anymore. He's, he's constantly updating. No, and it's he's, open source. He's and actually really great. 
when this exploit came out, the person who reported this exploit, he would talk to the, um, the guy who makes it, Ruggiero, I, I apologize if, uh, if I'm um, butchering your name, um, but um, he got it fixed really fast and was like, oh, oh, this is awesome. So, um, you wanna, gonna, Okay, so um, you want to show us? Because I, every now and then, to get a file across the network, I run this. Yeah. So what this is doing is actually running um, a scripting command that you can run on those systems. So you can actually tell an HFS server to do certain things with different scripts. Um, and it has a problem where it has it uses a percent zero zero as the end of in, end of the command, but it still processes the rest of it. Okay, so you put that, and then you put in the good stuff after. Right. So it actually uploads a VBS file or um, Visual Basic, Basic script. Yeah, Visual yeah. Basic script. I blanked on that, and then runs the Visual Basic script, and I get a shell. So get your ID. I am DK uh -oh. Lenovo DK. Man. And I can load Mimikatz. No, 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 Either that or I just toss it in the furnace. There you um, go. That's not eco-friendly. Don't do that. Uh, <laughs> let us know what you would do if Movix popped your box. You can email msf at hack5.org or you can let us know in the comments below. We do read all of those. And like Rob said, uh, these episodes come because you asked questions. And so if you have questions specific to Matt Exploit and you want to see us cover this or that, let us know. Um, it, it really drives the show. Yep. Uh, there's something else that drives the show. Huh? Me. Yes. No. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Patreon.com slash Mubix, M-U-B-I-X. It really is awesome that season five is completely supported by the Patreon, uh, the patrons that are the Patreon, I don't even know pa how. Patreoners. 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 I think Patreon that's a word. Ease? Ease? Might be. You Anyways. <laughs> Uh, the people that put a dollar behind, if you get some value from the show and you want to give some value back to continue its existence, that is epic. And if you can't totally understand, you know, you like it, share it, yeah. uh, just viewing it, Throw get, it you on know, Facebook. hitting up the view count, Love that's it. epic. Uh, it keeps this going and we're just blessed to be able to do this. Yeah, I really appreciate like the Hack 5 crew supporting this throughout five seasons already. Yeah. This is season five. This there is we insane. Go. And you know what? Um, if you would like to get even more hands-on with Metasploit, you're talking about this come June. Yeah, and so in June, <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice throw. Yeah. Uh, so in June 26th, that we're going to be doing a pen testing with Hack Five, like, so with all of with, us, with right? us, with so with Hack Five to right here and sit on the couch with us. And you do have to pay a little bit. Yeah, but it's, it's but, all, but you get a to little bit with Hack Five and you get toys. You get all ah, the Hack Five gear yes. in an epic Hack Five hacker tactical satchel, nice. and you get training from the people that develop the tools, and you learn, you know, the Wi-Fi auditing with the pineapple and the uh, social engineering with USB rubber ducky yep. and the meta split and some other fun, fun stuff, stuff that we have yeah. coming. So yeah, just uh, I mention this because uh, our this is our very first one, and so we want to yeah. make a big deal about this because uh, it's going to be epic, and we want to invite you all out because it will never be at this price again and it's kind of epic that we can share this with you and open up the hack house and let you in and just dive deep uh, for a couple of days on the pen testy goodness so what you can do is head over to hack5.org slash training and see how you can get in on pen testing with hack5 yeah all right so that's it um i'm mubix and i'll be hacking till the cows come home <laughs>